Praise the Lord. And our hope is, is that we, we believe that. Amen. That his mercies are new every day, as the Bible says. Praise God. I'm thankful for his mercy. Amen. I need his mercy. I need his grace. Amen. His love. Praise God. Good to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. How many of you love coming to church? Amen. It's very, very important. Amen. That we do come into the house of the Lord. We worship together. We learn together. We grow together. Amen. As the Bible says, we can be like a threefold cord that cannot be broken. Amen. There's something about the church unified. Something about the church when they are unified together. Amen. We bind together. Amen. In this Christian life, this journey, amen, in pursuit of God. Praise God. Tonight I'm going to talk about Christian living. Christian living. Some of the principles, some of the things that we do in our Christian life. Number one is read your Bible daily. Read your Bible daily. Number two is to learn the secrets of prayer. Learn how to pray. Amen. That is something that all of us as Christians need to do. Learn to pray. Number three is to rely on the Holy Spirit. Amen. To rely on the leading of His Spirit every single day. The Bible says that the sheep know their shepherd's voice. That is part of listening. Amen. And relying on the Holy Spirit. Attend church regularly. Amen. Number four. That is part of Christian living. The principles of Christian living. Be a witness. Be a witnessing Christian. Praise God. Let our light shine, be in the salt, praise God, as you've heard me say many, many times, amen, we are a city set on a hill that cannot be hid, praise God. Number six, let love be the ruling principle of our life, let love, the love of God, be the ruling principle of our life. Number seven, be obedient, be an obedient Christian, be an obedient Christian, I see some of you trying to write this down. If you'd like to have them, reach out to Sister Crystal and we'll get that to you. Number eight, learn how to deal with temptation. Learn how to deal with temptation. Temptation is not a sin. It's when you and I give in to that temptation that it becomes sin. Number nine, be a wholesome Christian. Be a righteous Christian. Do our best, amen, to be a wholesome Christian honoring God in everything that we do. And then lastly, number 10, living above our circumstances. Praise God. God has given us dominion authority over the circumstances in life. Praise God. And we are all going to go through things and we've got to learn how to overcome those circumstances in this life. Praise God. Amen. If you have your Bibles, let's turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. I am... As I've mentioned, going to be talking about Christian living tonight every other week. On Wednesdays, every other Wednesday, we are going to hop back and forth. We're going to talk about uh, just everyday things that God would have me talk about on our Wednesday night Bible study. But every other week, we're going to be talking about soul winning as well as preparing for our revival. Tonight, going to be talking about Christian living. I'm so grateful for God's word, aren't you? Amen. Think about where we would be if we didn't have the written word. How lost we would be. I'm glad that you and I do not have to guess. There is no guessing on how you and I are to relate to one another. That's Christian living. How you and I are to relate to one another and how we should go about living this Christian life separated unto God. Amen. The church means the called out ones. We are called out from everyone else. We are the church the bride of Christ. You see, the Christian believer, we place great focus and care upon our Christian life, upon this Christian living, upon the Christian principles by which we live. So here in Romans chapter 12, we see how we are to love sincerely. We're going to see how the next couple weeks we are... In Romans 12, we're going to see how we are to love sincerely, how we are to serve the Lord, how we are to conquer, to conquer trials, 
and to be a generous giver. Amen. So Revelate, our Romans rather, don't go to Revelation, please. Go to Romans chapter 12 and verse 9. Amen. Romans 12 verse 9, the scripture says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. It says, in honor, preferring one another. And verse 11 says, not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And then 13 says, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Amen. We're going to have a few weeks of learning what these passages actually mean. Amen. So if you would tonight, before we get into this lesson, let's just ask God, like we do every service, ask God to not only anoint me as the teacher, as the speaker, but God would anoint our minds and our hearts that we can we can see in the Word of God what God is wanting us to take away, what He's wanting us to apply to our life. The principles of Christian living is what we focus on and is what we live our life by. Amen? Let us pray. Father, thank you for the house of the Lord tonight. Thank you for every person that is here, every person that's listening in tonight. God, I know that we love you, God. We love you with all of our heart soul, mind, and strength. And God, if we do, it's going to be seen, God. It's going to be seen by others, Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus, let this lesson come to life in us. Let it live in us. Help us, God, to grow in principles of God's Word. Help me, God, to bring forth the Word of God. Everyone said in Jesus' name. Amen. Shake somebody's hand. Wave at somebody. Tell somebody hi. Amen. Love somebody. Praise God. Amen. This is a safe place. The house of the Lord is a safe place. We come. Amen. We find the love of God shared. Amen. Community, common unity with one another. Praise God. Talking about Christian living tonight. If there's anything we Christian believers must understand... And what we must do, it is loving one another. It is to love each other. Here the scripture says we are to love without dissimulation. Loving without dissimulation. What does that mean? The word dissimulation in the Greek, anipokritos, means to be genuine to be authentic, to be legitimate. It means to love without hypocrisy. It means no play acting. No play acting, right? No dissimulation. It says to love, amen, love without dissimulation. You and I are to love honestly and truthfully. Praise God. So church, this is how we are to love all of the time. Amen. This is how we are to love all the time as you and I pursue God, fearing, amen, living a God-fearing life and lifestyle. Praise God. We pursue God every single day. Amen. It's not just Sunday. It's not just Wednesday. It's not just when we feel good, right? No, but living for God, pursuing God is a daily task. It is something we do every day, living by the Spirit. Amen. And when we do, amen, we are to love honesty, honestly and we are to love truthfully. We must show love and respect, interest and attention, care and concern for others. And when we love, we must not fake it. We must not fake it through impure 
motives of any kind, right? You and I are not to seek for gain. We are not to seek position to fulfill a duty. We do not love to seek gain. We do not love to seek position. We do not love to fulfill a duty to take advantage of, to gain attention. No, we do not do that. We are to love others with nothing but pure motives and love by being completely free of any and all selfish motives. Amen. Note this. This kind of love that I'm talking about is being, we can see it's being, amen, commanded here in Scripture. This commanded love is for all men, all women, right? It is not just, amen, for the lost, but for the saved, for our brothers and sisters in the Lord. To all men, everyone, no matter who we come in contact with, we are to love them, amen, like God loves them. You see, our behavior toward others matters, and it matters not just sometime, it matters all of the time, amen? It matters all of the time. We've been talking about revival. We've been talking about, you know, being effective in our community. We've been talking about reaching the lost, being a soul winner. And it's very, very important that we get the foundations of Christian living down. Amen. What good are we to the world if we can't get these Christian principles, amen, alive and active and working in our life? Amen. You've heard me say it a lot. The first commandment is what? To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, mind, and strength. The second is, at, is like the first, to love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. So you and I as Christians, our behavior toward others matters, and it matters all of the time. So now, how are we to love? We're going to see in our passage tonight that we are to love by hating evil. Love by hating evil. Number two, love by cleaving to that which is good. Cleaving to good. Third, love by loving as brothers. We're going to see what that means. And then lastly, we love by giving preference to others. The believer is to love by hating evil. It says abhor. A-B-H-O-R. Abhor that which is evil. It means to hate with intense feeling and to hate violently. That's what that means, to abhor evil. You and I are not to give place to the devil. We are not to give place to any kind of evil, amen, in this world. It means to hate with intense feeling and to hate violently. How do we love? By hating evil. You see, love desires the very best for people, love desires the very best for evil. I mean, for people. Therefore, love hates evil, for evil destroys human life. Very, very important, amen, that you and I tonight understand, amen, that the Bible says that God is love. I talk a lot about Christian living. I talk a lot about Christian principles because they're vital, they're key. Amen. For you and I to build the proper foundation so that the people that do not know God, the unchurched, can look at us and see that there is something different about you and I. There's got to be something different. And the difference here is that we are Christians, believers, pursuing God, and we love differently than anyone and everyone else. Amen. So how do we love? Number one is by hating evil. We stand against evil and we fight against what? We fight against hurt and pain. We fight against drunkenness and drugs. We fight against hunger and poverty. We fight against selfishness and greed. We fight against uh, divisiveness, family divisiveness and divorce. We fight against unjust and improper behaviors. We fight against cursing and bitterness. We fight against immorality and lasciviousness. Amen. How do we love? We love by hating evil. We fight against it. And yes, the list can go on and on. 
But the point is, is that we must love. And love we do by hating and fighting against that which is evil. Romans chapter 12 and verse 9 says, Let love be without dissimulation. It says, Abhor that which is evil. Cleave to that which is good. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. So as stated, amen, how do we love? By hating evil. Number two, secondly, the believer is to love by cleaving to that which is good. Not only do we hate evil, not only do we shun evil, not only, amen, do we, do we violently detest and abhor evil, but the Bible says that we cleave to that which is good. The word cleave here means to join together, to fasten together, to attach itself to, to cement or glue together. So you and I are to hate evil, amen, and we are to cleave to that which is good. We not only have a hate for that which is evil, but we have a love for that which is good. And not a distant love. We're not talking about any kind of distant love, but a, the Bible says, it used the word cleave here, amen, a cleaving love where we desire only the best Amen for others. The very best, all the good possibilities for a brother or a sister or a stranger in the Lord. When I begin to look at this scripture, when I begin to study this and I begin to think about how we truly need to learn how to love others, just the fact that we need to be loving denotes that we can't, we can't let an unsaved world, right, we can't, we got to do everything in our power to fight against evil. How do we do that? We fight against evil by loving them. We fight against evil by loving good. We fight against evil by doing everything that we know is right. Amen. You can't fight evil with evil. You fight evil with good, right? Amen. The word cleave is important. We cleave to that which is good. Not a distant love but a cleaving love where we desire only the best for others, the very best, all the good possibilities for our brothers and sisters in the Lord. And when we see somebody in this world that does not know Jesus Christ, you see a drunk out on the street, you see a person that is, that is just deceived by, by humanism, and, and the list could go on and on. We, 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 we don't have a... We, we, we feel not only sorry for that individual, but we, we, we have our heart, amen, we have a burden, a heaviness about ourselves, amen, because we, we, we love them so much, amen, and we want to see them pulled, amen, from the clutches of this world. We want to see them come out from, amen, the vices of this world. And because we love them so much, we're going to do everything that we can to fight the evil that they're living in, the evil that we see. And then we are going to cleave to truth so much. We are going to cleave, amen, to that which is good so much that we are going to make a difference, amen, by the example that we live before them. Amen. I'm talking about the example that we can, we can uh, portray, that we can, we can live for one another. Amen. This is, we're, talking about, we're talking about not just loving the unchurched, but we're talking about loving one another. We're talking about caring for one another. There's got to be something different about you and I that the world sees directly about us that says hey i want to change my life i want to be like them i want to give up my life and my lifestyle i want to come out and i want to be the church i want to be the separated ones the called out ones and if we truly have this love this sincere love then we are going to fight in every possible way that we can to see God make an impact 
to be effective, amen, by seeing, amen, not only uh, the church draw closer to one another, amen, but also befriending people that are not in the church, amen, and seeing them come into the family of God. Galatians chapter 6 and verse 10 says, As we have therefore opportunity, as we have therefore opportunity, let us do good unto all men, especially unto them who are of the household of faith. Amen. So it, we shouldn't even have to, we shouldn't even have to be convinced or, or, or uh, talked into, right, doing good to our fellow brothers and sisters in the Lord. I mean, it says especially unto those who are of the household of faith, right? Those of us that are, are in the church, but it says at every opportunity, no matter what opportunity that you and I are given, let us do good unto all men and women. We are to seek to love and to do good unto all mankind. That means every living soul. Amen. I know that I'm uh, teaching uh, about something that we've heard uh, a lot about, but I think it's important that we as a church never forget that the Bible says, Faith, hope, and charity, right? But the greatest of these is charity. The greatest, the greatest of all is love. We can never forget the impact, and you will never forget, amen, the impact of God's love on your life. And this world desperately, sincerely needs to experience the love of God. And the only way they're going to experience the love of God is through you and I. Amen? We are the hands of Jesus. We are the feet of Jesus. We are His, amen, His body. We are His children, and we are to love sincerely. We are to seek to love and to do good unto all mankind, and that means every living soul. Praise God. Thirdly, we love sincerely by loving our brothers and sisters in Christ, by being kind and affectionate toward them. Amen. So let's slow down a little bit and let us go back and to be sure that we understand exactly, amen, what, what we're, we're looking at, what we're uh, taking away tonight. It says, let love be without dissimulation. So the love of God, the love that we share with one another, the love that we are to share with the with the world. The Bible is basically saying, amen, that there should not be any hypocrisy. We cannot be fake when we love one another. We cannot be fake when we love this world. When we say that we are, to, we're going to love one another, we're going to love this present world, right? Not the sins of the world, but love people in this world, that we are not going to do it with hypocrisy, that it is going to be a, a real love, a genuine, authentic, legitimate love without hypocrisy it's going to be honest it's going to be it's going to be truthful church this is what you and i amen have to example this is what you and i have to strive for we have to have god's love permeating through us it has to be something that that we example it's got to be something that we live for when we wake up in the morning we've got to say hey i am going to be one that's going to example i'm going to live god's love and i'm going to live it out loud for the world to see we must show love respect interest and attention care concern for others and when we love we must not fake it amen we must love like Christ loved the church. Amen. We stand against evil. We fight against it. Amen. Uh, no dissimulation. We hate evil. We cleave to that which is good. Amen. So very, very important that we understand. If we, if we can truly and genuinely understand the expectations that God has for us, then we are going to be able to, as the Bible says, that we are going to be able to do good unto all men. Amen. Not just those in the church, but those outside the church. Thirdly, we love sincerely by loving our brothers and sisters in Christ by being kind and affectionate toward them. Question, isn't this how we are to love 
anyways, right? Note, the word affectionate here in the Greek means and denotes a family-like love. A family love, as it says, if we keep on reading in verse 10, it says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love. This charge that we see here in Scripture is dealing with the Christian family, the church. We are a family of believers, a family of children who have been adopted by love himself, right? Because the Bible says that God is love. And we have become his sons and his daughters in love. John chapter 13, verses 34 to 35 says, A new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Amen. So, Old Testament, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth, right? Amen. Not a whole lot of love presented, not a whole lot of love example, but this new commandment that Jesus talked about in the New Testament, he says that ye love one another. He says, how? As I have loved you. Amen. That ye also love one another. By this, he said, shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one to another. Philippians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2 says, If there be therefore any consolation of Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any bowels and mercies, he says, Fulfill ye my joy. Fulfill ye my joy that ye do be what? like-minded, having the same love, being of one accord and of one mind. Fulfill ye my joy. Amen. It is saying that ye be like-minded. Amen. This is not, we're, we're talking about how we are to love one another, how we are to love one another so much that there's unity, that there's there's camaraderie, that there's no dissension, that there's, that there's a family-like feel, that, that we, we come together and we, we together are going to fight the evil in this world. Satan's greatest goal is to get the church you know, against one another. If he, can, if he can destroy the love of a family, if he can destroy the unity and the bond, amen, because what brings peace? Love brings peace, right? If he can get us at each other's throat, if he can get us uh, not to be concerned about uh, the care and, 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 and the unity and the love of the body, he can destroy us from within. So the church is to live in love, and living in love is peace. It brings peace. There is no dissension and no divisiveness in love. And there ought not to be any dissension and divisiveness in the church. Amen. We've been talking about soul winning, talking about revival, talking about, you know, uh, discipleship. And it's so very, very important, amen, that we realize that we will see revival. We will see, amen, the mighty hand of God if we just put together the principles that Christian living produces. Amen. A healthy church, a healthy, loving, unified church will be a church, amen, that will love others, that will love others one another amen that'll have that common unity praise god that they get up in the morning and realize that we are people of pur purpose that you and i are people of of uh discipline that we have amen this christian life we are called out ones that that we live to be separated that we that we we live Amen. As ambassadors, that we are focused, amen, on this Christian 
living, this pursuit of God daily. Amen. And, and we, we cannot allow anything to get in the way. Amen. The church is to live in love. The church is living in love. And when we live in love, that produces the peace of God. Amen. Think about this. There is no peace in our world. When Jesus, when Jesus ascended into heaven, what did he say? He said, I'm going to leave with you my comforter. He, he, he basically told us that, obviously, in the last these perilous times will come. In the, in, we're we're going we're gonna to see uh, terrible things. We're going to see you know, great persecution. We're, we're, we're going to see tribulation like you know, things in our world today. And he said, what the church is going to need, you're going to need my comforter. You're going to need my spirit. Amen. You're going you're to need the peace of God. And this is why it is so very, very important. Amen. That we have that peace. And the only way that we can have the peace of God, the comfort of God, amen, is by living these Christian principles and not, not allowing Amen. The, 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 worldly, uh, uh, the worldly influences, amen, to come into the church. Amen. We've got to have a church that is free of dissension. We've got to have a church that is free of divisiveness. Amen. And we've got to have that peace that God speaks of. And when we do, when you and I love each other and we have that peace, amen, the world is going to see the difference in us. They're going to see that common unity. They're going to see, amen, how different we are than everyone else. And lastly, the believer is to love by giving preference to other believers. Verse 10 says, be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love, in honor preferring one another. The word honor means to reverence to respect, to esteem. The word preferring means to go before, to lead, to set an example. So the message is clear. You and I as believers are to take the lead in esteeming and expressing respect, expressing respect to others. It should be our goal that no one is ever overlooked. Amen. Think about, think about what I'm talking about tonight. Think about if you and I loved God like we see from Scripture, right? If we love God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength, okay? If we loved God and we loved others, and as it says here, that we are to be kindly affectioned one to another with that brotherly love, that family-like love, in honor preferring one another. So what, this is, what I'm talking about here is, is that it should be our goal in the church that no one is ever overlooked, that no one is never not honored, that no one is never not esteemed, that no one is never not befriended, right? That we're not thanked, that we, no one is never not recognized, no one is never not shown appreciation. Think about this. Think about if we made this a priority, that that. There's never any idle time that you and I don't have the luxury of setting down our Christianity. We don't have, we don't have the luxury of setting aside this, this God-like love, amen, that we need to have for one another, amen. This, this, this pursuit of godliness can never be set aside, amen. If we care about one another, if we have this brotherly love, this family-like love. And if we do what? If we, have, if, we have, if we esteem one another, if we honor one another, if we are thankful for one another, if we recognize one another, if we show appreciation to one another, amen, if we do that, amen, we can honor preferring one another, amen. Imagine a church filled with members who are not out for themselves. Think about it. Think about that. I know, I know you're saying, well, this is, but you know, we don't see this like we want to see this in the church all the time. This is not, 
you know, yeah, this, this teaching may, be, may not be new, but, but we, don't, we, don't, we don't see the, the, the body preferring one another all the time. We don't see the, the body recognizing and showing appreciation and treating one another like family, like, the, like our brothers and sisters in the Lord. Amen. We, we don't see esteem and honor. We don't see that all the time. And it's so very important that, that when, we, when we show true, genuine, brotherly love, when we show kindness and affection toward another, other, we will see, we will, we, we will live to unite. We will live to mend. We will live to hold and to connect and live the life that brings honor to God and to bring honor to his word. Amen. Imagine a church filled with members who are not out for themselves, but out for one another. Imagine the picture of perfection the church would be if we truly esteemed others and honored, honored others. What a picture of true love and care, of real warmth and tenderness, of great strength and godliness. And just think, I believe that we can, we can have such a church. I believe that we can, we can have exactly what God intended for us to have if we just read the scriptures, if we just apply them, and if we live these Christian principles daily. If we just say, God, help, help us. Help me, God. Help me. And I go to my closet of prayer and I say, God, I want to do my very, very best, God. I want to do my best, Lord, to, to, to bring unity, to bring, to bring you know, harmony, and God, to unite and to mend, to hold together, to connect together, to live a life that brings honor to God, and to live a life, amen, that honors his word. As you and I excel in so many other areas of this life, we can and we will excel in this life, in this, on this earth, as we seek to honor God and fulfill his divine will. In Romans chapter 12, in verse 3, it says, For I say, through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Amen. Through the grace given to you and I, to every man, every woman among us, not to think more highly of ourselves than we ought to think, but to think soberly, to think seriously. Amen. To, to take serious this relationship with God. To, say, to take serious the church, the church house, one another. Not taking anyone for granted. But by hating evil, we will love each other. We will, we will cleave to that which is good. We will do the principles that this scripture is asking for us to do. Amen. Romans 12.10 says, Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. Philippians chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. It says, let nothing be done through strife or vainglory, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem other better than themselves. Think about that. Think about that. Amen. That we are going to esteem one another better than ourselves. That we're not going to be looking out for self. Amen. Think about if we live by that principle alone, that when we get up in the morning, we go about our daily routine. We may be going to work. Maybe it's our day off. Maybe we're going to go do our laundry. Maybe we're going to go wash the car. Maybe we're going to go grow. Wherever we go, wherever we go, that, amen, that we are going to be about others, that we are not going to, amen, put ourselves above anyone else. But as the scripture says, that we are going to esteem others better than ourselves. Look not every man on his own things, the Bible says, but every man also on the things of others. Amen. Think of how impacting that we can and we will be to our fellow brothers and sisters and to all those that look to the church, all those that look at us and to us 
to be like Christ, and then as we prefer one another in love over self. Amen. This, this sounds very easy. It really does. But it's not always, it's not always easy as it sounds. Amen. We, we put a lot of energy and effort and hard work into you know, being the best that, 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 that we want to be or that we need to be. Amen. But the Bible says we're supposed to put others before ourselves. Amen. We're supposed to, we're supposed to prefer our brother, bearing one another's burdens, caring for them. Amen. And when we get these principles, when we get this Christian, these Christian principles in our heart, in our mind, and we live daily to pursue God and to make these a part of our life, it's going to not only change who we are as a person, it will not only change who we are as a church, but then we will be making the greatest of impacts in our world because it's not about me, right? It's not about us. Amen. You saw the slide before, the, before church. Amen. It says we before me. Amen. We before me. It's about you before myself. It's not about me trying to get ahead. It's not about me trying to make a name for myself. It's, it's about preferring one another, esteeming one another. Amen. Trying to, trying to make God famous through the Christian principles that I apply in my life. Amen. And when I apply those Christian principles, amen, it's, it's loving, amen, God Number one, uno number one, first and foremost. And then the Bible says, love my neighbor. Who is my neighbor? Anyone and everyone that I come in contact with. Amen. My, 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 my church, my church brothers, my church sisters, right? Amen. Anybody and everybody in this world, people that we come in contact, this is what this scripture, amen, is talking about tonight. Let love be without dissimulation. I've got to learn, I've got to, Truly learn how to love without hypocrisy. When I say I love someone, it can't just be idle words. It's got to be backed up with action. Amen? Amen. We've got to hate evil. We've got to not only hate evil, but we've got to cleave to that which is good. It says, be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor preferring one another. And then verse 11, which we're going to Pick up the next time we teach this lesson. This is not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Verse 12, rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing instant in prayer. And then 13, distributing to the necessity of saints, given to hospitality. Amen. The musicians would come tonight. I'm going to close tonight. If you stand with me. You've heard me say this often. Talk is cheap. Talk is cheap, right? We can, you know, do as I say, not as I do, right? It's so, so very important that, that we are not just hearers, but we're doers of the word. Amen. That these Christian principles that I'm talking about tonight, amen, they're not just something that, that can be an idea. It's not just something that we talk about. It's not just something, it's not just a scripture that we read, but it's something that we actually have to do every day. These Christian principles, it's something that we actually have to make up our mind and decide that we are going to, we are going to live a different life than those that do not love God, that those that, that do not care. We care. That what, that's what makes the difference between those that just say it and those that do it amen i don't want my i don't want i want my love to be without hypocrisy amen when i say that i want to when i say i want to see the church grow what is that what does that mean when i say i want to see our church grow does that mean that i i want to see our church grow so bad that i'm going to hate evil and i'm going to cleave to that which is good that I that I want I want to see God make such an uh, 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 an impact that I'm not just going to nod my head when pastor's teaching I'm not just going to shake my head and say Amen but I, but I'm going to I'm going to actually put my boots on the ground that I'm actually going to find a place to pray 
that, that I, I'm literally going to live these Christian principles. And that when I say I love God, when I say I love God, I'm not a hypocrite. But I actually do love God by what I do, not by just what I say. But I'm actually loving God by hating evil, changing my life. Right? Not just, not just talking the talk, but I'm walking the walk. I, I abhor, I hate evil. And I'm going to pray against it. I'm going to do whatever I can. Amen. The Bible says saving some, you know, by fear, pulling them out of the fire. That I'm, I'm going to do what, 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 what God is calling me to do. I'm not just going to do, you know, do idle words, but my, my, my love is going to be genuine. I'm going to love by hating evil. I'm not only going to hate evil, but I'm going to make sure that I'm cleaving to that which is good. It's not just not doing those things, but it, I have to do those things that are right in the eyes of God. I got to do those things that are right. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love. I got to have, I got to treat everybody like their family. That's what the Bible's talking about. I got to treat everybody like, like their fa- like with brotherly love. That's what it says. Amen. Brotherly love. Amen. In honor, preferring one. We can do this. Amen. We can literally do this. Not just talking about it, but, but living these Christian principles. Amen. And when we do, this is, I guess this is, this is been, when I begin to read uh, the scripture, when I begin to study, I'm, I'm like saying, God, if we really got a hold of this, if we, if we really did this, there would be nothing that could stop us from, 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 from having revival. What can stop us? Faith, hope, cheer, but the greatest is love. The greatest of all is love. Amen. When we truly love one another, amen, something supernatural is going to happen when, we, when we, we, we're not out just for self. We're not out just to, you know, to, 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 to get ahead of other people, but I prefer, my, I prefer one another. We're preferring one another. And we're loving what we're caring for one another. We, 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 can't be, we can't be hypocritical about our love. We can't be hypocritical about our love for the lost. No, we gotta, we got to hate evil. And what that means is we got to do everything in our power, amen, to fight against evil, right? Amen. If we, if, 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 if we are going to not have hypocrisy in our love, then that means that we are going to be a light. We are going to be the salt. Because we're going we're gonna to go into this world and we're going to fight evil. Amen. Through our life, through our love for God. Amen. We're going to fight evil. Amen. By, 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 by being a person of prayer. By being a person of faith. By being a person that says, I, I am, I, I, I am going to be an action figure, right? I'm going to be, I'm, I'm going to be a Christian. I'm going to be, I'm going to apply the, the power of God in my life. I'm, I'm not a hypocrite when it comes to my love. When I say, Pastor, I want to have revival, that means that I'm going to be a part of revival. That I'm going to, I'm going to love the way that I'm supposed to love. I, I truly hope that I'm, I'm I, 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 I honestly didn't feel like I'm, I was getting what I wanted to get across. Amen. A little bit of a struggle tonight for, for you to receive this, but, but, but I, think, I think it's starting to, I think you're going to start to connect the dots. Amen. It, 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 there's got to be, when I say there's got to be something different about the church, there's got to be something different about Christians. Amen. What is that difference? That difference is, is the love of God. Amen. It, it's, it's God's love in us. Amen. Amen. That, 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 that's got to be the difference maker. Amen. Because this world doesn't understand God's love. This world, we, we're, they step on one another. They, they, they stab each other in the back. They talk against each other. They, they really hate each other. They're really not one another's friends. They really don't care about one another. For the most part. But you see, I'm talking to, I'm talking to the called out ones. I'm talking to God's church. I'm talking about, if, hear me, if we can get healthy, if we can get, you know, remember what I said revival means? It's getting right with God and right with one another. Right with God and right with one another. If we can get right with God, if, 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 if my love for God can be genuine, 
I really hope that you're, you're receiving what I'm saying tonight. If my love for God is without dissimulation, if my love for God is authentic, if my love for God is genuine, it's legitimate, I'm not play acting, then that means that if my love for God is real, it's the real deal, then that means that I'm gonna, I'm gonna be effective. I'm gonna be powerful, I'm gonna be fruitful. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna be powerful. I mean, the Bible says, and you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost comes upon you to be a witness in our world. God, I don't want, I don't want to be play acting when it comes to my love for God. I don't want to be play acting for my love for truth. I don't want to be play acting for my love for souls. Right? Some of you, you know, uh, just under your, under your voice right now, just say quietly your occupation. Whatever your occupation is. Whatever you do in life, whatever you did in life, maybe you're retired. Now, how are we going to take this relationship with God and use not only who we are and what we are, but our talents, our giftings, our callings to show the world how much we really love them and how much we care, that we're going to be authentic and genuine and we're going to be real. Amen. When we, when we do that, we, I promise you, we will be effective. We will be fruitful. There's, there's something different about me. When I walk in this world, Amen. We, I gotta have the fruit of the spirit, love, joy, peace, goodness, gentleness, faith, meekness, temperance, long suffering. You know, we gotta have the the fruit of the spirit. Amen. It starts right here. It starts on these foundational Christian principles. These foundational Christian principles, without hypocrisy. God, help me to help me to love without dissimulation. Help me to hate evil. When I when you hate evil. Your purpose in life is completely different. And then when you cleave to that which is good, when you stay close to righteousness and godliness, amen, and when we love each other with brotherly kindness, it's going to make a difference. It's going to change the world, right? Amen. As we sing tonight, my, my hope and my prayer is that, is that you receive what I, what I was teaching tonight, that you receive this, and that... Not only do we hear it, but we become doers of the word of God. That we take, this is it, that we take what we've learned tonight, what we've heard tonight, we take it to our prayer closet. And we say, God, help me. You should go back, amen, to this, this passage in Romans, amen, chapter 9. Go back to this and read this and say, God, help me. That I can be legitimate, authentic, and I can make a difference in my world as we sing. The way he wants me to live. I want to give. I want to give until there's just no more to give. I want to love. I want to love. Love till there's just no.
God, praise God. Something I said Sunday, I want to close with this. There are some who, while they do not spot nor stain their garments in gross iniquities, nevertheless do not walk in white. If you remember what I said on Sunday, they walk in gray. Somebody has said that morally and spiritually black and white has become a smudge of indefinite gray. You see, gray is the color of compromise. It's neither black nor white. It is a very popular color nowadays in the realm of of religion. Our garments should neither be spotted nor gray. We should walk in white down here so that we may walk with our Lord in white in the hereafter. Amen. That comes to my mind because too often I believe that our love is our, li our love is hypocritical. We say we love souls but we do very little about it. We walk in gray. We're compromised. The Bible says, seek first the kingdom. Amen. I'm trying to get us ready for revival. I'm trying, amen, to get us a burden that we would seek for a burden. I, you can't, I, I can't buy them in bulk. I can't buy burden in bulk. I can't, I can't buy it on Amazon. I can't buy a bunch of it and bring it, Brother Brandon, and put it on the platform and, and for you to come up and just take some burden with you, right? Amen. Too often... Amen. We are hypocritical about our love. Too often we're hypocritical about winning the world. We've got, we can't walk in gray. We can't, we can't compromise. We cannot, we cannot. We've got to be determined that we are going to make a difference in our world. That we are going to, we are going to be self-motivators. That we are, that we are genuinely going to uh, find a place to pray. Every day, every week, we're going to find a place to pray and say, God, I've got, to, I've got to be real and genuine with my relationship with you, God. I, I, I've got to be real and genuine about winning the lost. I can't have this color gray. I've got to be white. I've got to, I've got to be so distinctly different. I can't be the way I used to be. I've got to be changed. And God, help me to live this changed life daily. Amen. Church, we've got to have revival, and it's going to come at a cost. It's going to come at changing who we are, and that's what I'm talking about this Christian living, living these Christian principles. Amen? Amen. I, I can't do this for you. We have to do this individually and personally. Amen. I'm praying that you're praying that you can find a burden for souls. I'm praying that I find a burden like I've never had for souls. And I can't keep my mouth shut about the goodness of God. I can't not help. I, 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 it's legit. It's, it's, it's non-hypocritical. I'm telling everybody how much God loves them and what he's done for me. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here tonight on this wonderful Wednesday night Bible study. Amen. Remember, all of you matter. Amen. You matter to God. You matter to the church. God bless you. Amen. Thank you for being here. You're dismissed in Jesus' name. Have a great, great night. We'll see you back here on Father's Day. God bless you.